All right, let's look at masks. What we're seeing in front of us right now is a mask made with traditionally typed text, a mask made with edited text, a mask made with a pre-created shape, and a mask created from a hand-drawn shape. Anything can be used as a mask. You can create any shape mask that you want to use. Now you have to decide, once you've created the shape of your mask, you have to decide what you want to fill it with. So let's jump over here and let's just do a few different examples together. First of all, you can simply type a word, any old word. You can resize that word. It can remain editable text and you can simply use this as a mask for any kind of image. So I've got a few pages of imagery open. Let's just come in and fill those letters with imagery. So first of all, I wanna fill the whole word with an image. So I'm gonna resize it. I could resize it in any way. I could resize it later. I don't have to resize it before I masked it. But let's see what happens. So first of all, if you look in your layers, make sure you see the mask on top. The mask is the shape you want to fill. So in this case, the word type is our mask. So I wanna drag it up. Next, we don't want to leave your um, photo inside what looks like a folder. It's just adding cumbersome steps into your layers. So if you just select the photo and drag it directly under and that folder type layer disappears. So for each mask, you want the, the mask shape and the picture that you want to fill inside there. So I have the mask on top, which is the word type. I have the imagery directly underneath. Now, the picture also has to be directly underneath whatever is being masked. If I mask while the picture's over here, that text is going to look empty. There will not be a picture in it. Whatever is physically sitting under the mask and physically sitting under the mask in the layers. That is what fills the, the mask shape. So now we have um, the shape we've chosen to use. In this case, it's type. We have an image pasted in. The image sits directly under. And let's select them both. So holding shift, I select both of these circles next to the layers I'm masking and make sure both of the layers are selected. So not just selecting the layers, also make sure these radial dials or circles are also selected, important. Once you've done that, go to object at the top, move your mouse down to clipping mask and click on make. And if you'll notice, the shortcut is here, Command-7. So you don't always have to do those steps. And look at that, we've just created a mask. A mask will hide everything outside of the shape of the mask. Now, we're not stuck with this as is. If you click these individually, they're still editable. So I've just selected the uh, photo itself, and now it's movable. So I could use the arrows on my keyboard if I wanted to adjust how they're being seen through the actual text. I can resize. So there are options. I could select just the text and let's just say I wanted to pop it out a bit. I could put a stroke on it if I wanted to. Now it's defaulting to a one point. That might be fine for whatever you're doing or you could thicken that up some. So each of these layers remains editable. Um, let's see next. So um, let's do another word and resize. And this 
goes along with one of your assignments right now. We are going to right click and create outlines. As soon as we did the right click to create outlines, this was no longer editable text. Okay? And that's what you're doing with your name design. Very quickly, I'm just editing these shapes just slightly so that you can see them as examples. I'm using my direct select tool to edit the actual shapes of these letters and I need to zoom in so I could see the anchor points. Ah, there we go. So now that is a most bizarre looking R. Um, again, I'm just doing this quickly so you can differentiate between what is editable type and what has become objects. So let me zoom back out. Okay, so the editable type is up here. Uh, I'm sorry, the editable type is what we did first where it's still editable. And now we are working on the word word. As soon as I created it in outlines, it separated each letter to its own layer, essentially. So I cannot mask the same way I did with the editable type. Once I changed all the letters to outlines, each individual letter became its own mask. So what does this mean? Let's go back here. We'll grab this next picture. Let's copy the image, come back in, and I'm going to paste it. And it pastes it right up here at the top. Let me get my selection tool, and we're just going to bring it down a little. Okay. Now, what did I say before? You take the picture and put it directly underneath whichever uh, shape is going to be your mask. I'm going to put it under the O. And although you, actually I'll put it all the way at the bottom of the word. It's behind the entire word, word. And we think we're going to mask that, right? Wrong. It will not mask with all of those letters. You have to do them one at a time. So I'm directly under the letter W. I'm going to click that little radial dial or circle. I'm going to uh, select the picture. Both are selected. What was that shortcut for making a clipping mask? I could do object clipping mask make or use command seven. Let's do that this time. Command seven. Look at that. You think it should be able to mask all those words, but it cannot. It would have to be done for each individual letter. So I've masked the shape of the W. If I wanted to use that same image for every, um, for every letter, I'd have to copy the image, paste the image. Again, it's showing up at the top, drag it down below. The letter that I wanted to mask, I'd select the O and the um, photo and then Command 7 and now the O has also been masked. Okay, so each one would have to be done individually. As for shapes, we could grab a pre-created shape and let's jump over let's grab ourselves some fireworks we're going to just click on here we will copy come over paste masking happens in the same way no matter what we use so at this point it's a little repetitive but you should not forget so i have the photo of fireworks it's directly above the star shape. I'm going to drag it below. Select the circle or radial dial of the mask, which is the star shape, and the photo below. Let's command seven and look at that. Same thing each time. All right, we could do. I am just doing some crazy shape. It's just any old shape. What did we not use? Oh, let's grab one of my flags. Okay, copy image, come over, paste, and use my move tool to drag it in place. I can resize it to whatever way I want. Again, make sure you're in the layers, drag 
the image below the mask. Can't tell you that enough times. The image must sit below the shape you want to use as your mask. Command seven, and there we go. Okay, so in your notes, any shape can be a mask. That's step one, choose your shape. Step two for making your mask, you have to find an image that you want to fill into the mask, okay? Step three, you have to make sure you organize in your layers. You must organize your image to sit directly below the shape of your mask. Step four, you have to be sure to highlight the circle or radial dial next to the image and the sh uh, mask shape, as well as select the layers. So don't just click on one of those circles and the layers. You have to click both circles and both layers. Okay, that's step four. Step five, mask, which means object, clipping mask, and make. That is step five. Or, of course, you can use the shortcut, Command-7, and it will mask for you. And that is it for how to mask.